12 white balls and 15 black balls. You close your eyes, reach in this bucket and grab blindly, you select three balls. Well, let's say you reach in blindly and you select five balls. So now we need a random variable. Let X be the number of those five balls that are white. So X, this is a discrete random variable. possible values are 0, 1, 2, up to 5. So the, now the probability say that x is a particular value, say that x equals 2 is equal to 1. The number of ways to select two white balls by the number of ways to select five balls total. So this is equal to choose 2 times 15 choose 5 minus 2 where this is on the left hand side uh, the white and this is the number of ways to select the black divided by the total number of ways which is you have 12 plus 15, you're choosing five of them. And this is equal to some number, I won't get into it. So then in general, the probability that x equals k for k equals 0 up to 5, 
we just replace the twos with k. So it's 12 choose k, 15 choose 5 minus k, divided by 12 plus 15 choose 5. So in general, to generalize this problem, suppose you have a population of n objects, or n successes and failures in objects. I'll say r successes. And the rest are failures, so n minus r are failures. And you take a sample of size little n. And if you take x, a random variable, counting number of successes. Then x is distributed as hypergeometric in r little n. Hypergeometric. There are three parameters here, all of which are necessary, and the probability mass function the probability that x equals k where k can be anything from 0. Mm, sorry, it can't. It might not be able to be 0. Uh, we have to be a little more careful about that. So the probability mass function, let's just say, in general, it looks like, um, so from R, R successes, you're choosing K to win. From N minus R, you're choosing N minus k to not win, divided all by total number that you can choose, n over big n over little n. Okay. And this is for, now we have to think a little bit about the least value of k. So here is the PDF, and we have these constraints. We know that k must be less than capital R. Okay, here are the real constraints. k has to be between 0 and n, and also an integer. So this would always be true, like for a binomial random variable. But we also have these uh, binomial coefficients here. so 
from r choose k, this implies that k is less than or equal to r, which means we can't have more successes than failures. So the other term also has a similar implication. n minus r choose n minus k. That implies that the smaller one, n minus k, has to be less than capital N minus r. So we can flip it around and get a constraint on k here. But this means we can't have more failures than exist in the population. So we can combine these constraints that we have here, zero is less than or equal to k, and it means that the maximum of zero in r, capital R plus little n minus capital N is less than or equal to k. Similarly, the other constraints give us another set of constraints where k has to be less than or equal to the minimum of n and r, and the PMF is zero otherwise. The other thing to note is if the sample size is small relative to the population, then x is a, about binomial, approximately binomial. With probability of success, capital R over capital N, the number of successes.